What is going on, YouTube? Fascinating graveyard. And here today, we are at the new, the new St. Mary's Cemetery here in Belmar, New Jersey. We are right next to Philadelphia. Right next to Philadelphia. As a matter of fact, if you look over that wall over there, you should be able to see the skyline. You should be able to, oh, there it goes. Thank you, drone. Thank you, drone, for all of your hard work and dedication. Today, we're here to visit the grave of Danny Rapp. Danny was the lead singer of a 1950s doo-wop group called Danny and the Juniors. Danny Rapp was born May 9th, 1941 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So him and his friends, when they were kids, they made this singing group called the Juveneers. And later on, Danny was like, hey guys, I got this really, really great idea. And they said, yeah, what's going on? How about we change the name to Danny and the Juniors? You know, being that I am the lead singer. And I don't know how the other guys felt about that, but the name was changed. And they became Danny and the Juniors. So they are best known for their pretty much one hit wonder song called At The Hop. You know how that song goes, right? It goes, ah, 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 at the hop, da, 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 da. well, you can rock it, you can roll it, you can stop it and stroll it at the hop, up, 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 oh, baby, let's go do the hop, oh, baby, let's go do, well, you guys know what I'm talking about. So, that song, when it first came out, it wasn't really selling, it wasn't really moving. So, they were set to perform on American Bandstand, of course, hosted by the legendary Dick Clark. And Dick told the kids, he's like, hey, guys, uh, how about you change the name? Because originally that song was called Do the Bop. And he's like, eh, let's change it to At the Hop. It sounds stupid, Do the Bop. What's the bop? Get out of here. And I'm sure they you know, like, okay, they probably did whatever he wanted because they want to get on that TV show because Dick Clark, if you're on American Bandstand, he's making stars. He could, you know, he had a lot of power. He could make it break you. So that song came out at the end of 1957 and it reached uh, number one on the U.S. charts and it was one of the top selling singles in all of 1958. And of course, they had a couple other songs past that one. They had Twist in USA, uh, they had Rock and Roll is Here to Stay, which guys, list, you know, between me and you, whoever's watching, you know, Rock and Roll is Here to Stay. It's the same song as At the Hop. It's just different lyrics. Okay, it's just, you know, whatever. So they never reached the same level of success with that song like a lot of one-hit wonders do. It's just hard to obtain that kind of success. So they still performed into the 60s, into the 70s, and then they split up into two different factions. I guess they started fighting over money or whatever. So a couple members of their group, Joe Terranova and Frank Maffey, they broke off and they made their own group, but they still used Danny and the Juniors as their name. It was just no Danny, it was just Juniors. And so Danny, he and the other guys, they were still performing as Danny and the Juniors, but then the other guys left, and then he would hire people like just to sing back up to him or whatever. So he was playing towards the end of his career. He was playing at really, really like small places. So in March of 1983, he got this engagement for it's like a month long engagement. He was singing at this lounge, the Silver Lining Lounge, in the uh, in a restaurant that was at a resort in Phoenix. It was called the uh, Point Tapatio Resort. I'm not, I've never heard of this place. Maybe they have like golf and, you know, stuff like that, pools or whatever. So he's at this lounge at a restaurant at the Point Tapatio or Tapatio Point, uh, you know, place. 
you know. Now, me personally, me personally, hey, if you're still able to make money and sing, even if you are a lounge singer, who cares? To me, that's an ultimate success. If you can make a living singing at small places all across the, the, the country, man, brother, you're living the dream. You're living the dream. But I guess Danny just got depressed about, you know, his position in life. Maybe he thought he should be a bigger star. Maybe he thought he should be playing in like bigger, you know, venues or whatever. So on April the 2nd, 1983, that was his last night performing at the Silver Lining Lounge at that restaurant, the different point restaurant at the Point Tapatio uh, Resort. He gets into his car and starts driving west on Interstate 10. And he comes up to a town called Quartzsite, Arizona. It's not very far, I believe, from the border with California. So he goes over there and he checks into the Yacht Club Motel, right? Unpacks his bags. Then he goes around town. There's really not much at Quartzsite. So he drinks at one of the only bars in town. It's called the Jigsaw. So he was just getting, getting hammered, getting hammered, getting hammered. And sometime during that weekend, he bought a brand new 25 caliber pistol from a private individual, private seller. He's nice and loaded, nice and drunk. Goes back to his room at the Yacht Club Motel, sits on his bed, takes the gun, looks at it, and sadly, the rest is no more. Uh, he died in his hotel room by his own hand. Very, very sad story to say the least. And uh, this is the grave of Danny Rapp. Try not to get my shadow in the way, but it's going to be kind of hard. Yeah. You know, when it comes to mental illness, uh, there's really not much you can say about whatever it is that you do. You know what I mean? It's just, listen, this guy was still making money right up until the end of his life. I don't know why you would do that. I mean, you know, you're going to do it. You're going to do it. Uh, there's phone numbers out there to help people who are not feeling well. Their, their brain is not working properly. But, um, yeah, this guy just, I don't know. It's, it's a, quite a sad story to say the least. And, you know, if this guy was still alive, this guy, he could have still made money. You could still perform. That's why you hire a manager. They book you uh, gigs in, in, in different places. You could have gone to Vegas and performed. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Anybody, if you, listen, if you could make money performing, you already made it, whether you're big or whether you're small. So rest in peace to... Daniel Rapp, and uh, with that, I bid you farewell. I am out of here. I got to get back to Philly. Got some stories to cover. All right, guys, you be good. Catch up with you on the next video. Peace out.